In the last part of this presentation, we focus on soil water movement and the required soil physical parameters. We're going to describe drainage, capillary rise, and surface runoff. Let us start with drainage. When the soil water content is above field capacity, this water will drain away as a result of gravitational forces. To describe soil water movement, we have to consider the hydraulic conductivity of the soil. In aquacrop, we use the saturated hydraulic conductivity, which is the rate for the soil layer to transmit water through the saturated soil under the influence of gravity. Here you see some indicative values for KSAT for different soil types. Now, a typical KSAT value really does not exist because it varies in time and space as a result of variations in soil structure, bulk density, biological activity and soil management. From the KSAT value, AquaCrop derives a drainage characteristic, tau, with this equation. In AquaCrop, drainage is simulated with an exponential curve which shows the variation in function of time of the soil water content between saturation and field capacity. The shape of the curve is determined by the tau value. Tau expresses the fraction of the total drainable amount of water which can be drained on the first day. In this example, if tau is 0.5, 50% of the water will drain on the first day. In sandy soils with a high KSAT value, tau will be large as well. In this example, 0.9. It means that 90% of all the water has drained on day one. In a clay soil with a low KSAT and a low tau, the drainage will continue during a long time, since only 20% of the total drainable amount of water is drained on the first day. Let's have a look of the simulation of drainage in aqua crop. I take the default conditions as specified in the main menu and run a simulation. I'm going to put the reference evapotranspiration on zero because I want to show only the movement and retention of the water. I advance with time step of one day. If I start my simulation, I see that the root zone depletion remains at zero. That is because by default, the simulation starts with a soil at field capacity, and since there is no extraction of water or no infiltration of water, the root zone depletion remains zero. If I have an irrigation of, let's say, 40 millimeters, and I continue my simulation, that water will infiltrate, and in the next day, it slowly drains away. I can see that here, in the second tap sheet, which for the moment is indicated as rain. When I select that tap sheet and change the parameters to deeper collation, which is a parameter of the soil water balance, and I assign it, I can see that there was drainage on those days. Let me adjust the scale to a maximum of 20 millimeters and I assign it and now we can see that indeed after that irrigation of 40 millimeters it takes a few days before the soil is back at field capacity. Let us focus now on the capillary rise from groundwater table. 
So in the presence of a groundwater table, capillary rise is considered. It is calculated by considering soil characteristics of the subsoil. What is the soil type? Is that a sandy soil, more loamy, clay soil? And what is the KZ value? For the specific soil, aqua crop will select the curve. The shape of that curve is determined by the soil type and KZ. It shows the potential capillary rise for various depths of the groundwater table. For example, when the groundwater table is at Z meters below the root zone, the potential capillary rise is 1.7 millimeters per day for this soil type with that particular case set. If 1.7 millimeters per day is really transported upwards, depends on the soil water content in the root zone. It determines the driving falls. When the soil is too wet, when the soil water content in the root zone is close or above even field capacity, capillary rise is zero. Water cannot be transported upwards since there is no driving force. If the root zone becomes drier, the capillary rise will increase and reach the potential value of 1.7 millimeters per day. However, when the root zone becomes very dry, the driving force is strong, but the hydraulic conductivity is very, very small and the capillary rise drops again to zero at wilting point. To simulate capillary rise, I need to specify that the groundwater table is shallow. By clicking here, I can change the settings and I will select a groundwater table, which is at two meters. It is constant in this case. Let me return to the run menu and start my simulations. So I have advanced by 30 days. If we look now for the capillary rise in the second tab sheet and I select capillary rise as the parameter to be plotted, I assign it and I can see that there is indeed some capillary rise. If now due to a heavy irrigation of let's say 150 millimeters, a lot of water infiltrate in the soil, capillary rise stops because water is draining and it's only after a while that capillary rise will come visible again. Let us finally focus on surface runoff. Part of the rainfall might be lost by surface runoff and does not infiltrate. Now, to simulate surface runoff, aquacrop consider a curve number and the wetness of the topsoil. Now, the curve number is derived from the saturated hydraulic conductivity. There are also field management practices which will affect surface runoff and they will be discussed in the training module for field management. The wetness of the topsoil varies the soil curve number. What are now the required parameters to describe soil water retention and soil water movement? Soil water retention, we needed to know what was the saturated field capacity and permanent wilting point for the different horizons. To describe movement of water, additionally, we require the saturated hydraulic conductivity. In the presence of a shallow groundwater table, we need to specify the depth of the groundwater table to know the amount of water which will move from the water table to the root zone by means of capillary rise. 